since I've been back to Hollywood. My, my old school days, my fashion design, filmmaking days. So I thought I'd share something with you and show you why this inspirational channel of mine is so important and why I want to share it with you because I feel the insight and the experience that I had will help you significantly. I'm a big believer in affirmations. Guys, this is Kevin Dutois. How's it going? Hey, I want to let you know something. I respect you and appreciate you and I love you for watching this. I think everything that I'm going to say is going to help you tremendously. Especially those that are going through kind of like cracks in the universe right now. Those that are having hard times, those that are struggling in many ways. They can't find work or they're scared to work because of the, the current situation we're in. I can't say that online. Um, I want you to know that you can do and be anything you want to be. Okay, and the guys, the one thing is all, all it's gonna take is just action. Okay, so just show up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through Hollywood. My old stomping ground where I lived for 16 years. Nine years of them, I lived in Melrose Avenue, just in the Fairfax district, um, which is an, an amazing, beautiful area. And I just love the people there. Um, Madonna's home's on the other side. There's a Hollywood sign over there. I'm gonna, show, I'm gonna share all these things with you, but let's get into the dialogue quickly, guys. What I wanna let you know is that uh, everything that happens in your existence starts up here in your mind. Nothing happens if you don't think about it. Okay? If you think negative things, negative things are going to happen in your life. If you think positive things, positive things happen. That's why they say every day, do your affirmations. Meaning write them down, write them out. Because here's how it works. 95% of your day is repeated from the previous day before. So what you did yesterday, today you did 95% of almost identical thing. You went to the same job, same friends, same uh, uh, work logistics, same opportunities, nothing really changes. 5% changes in a sense of, you know, every day you didn't go to the bathroom at the same time. You didn't do this exactly the same work you did yesterday. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is that there's, 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 there's opportunity, there's room for change. So if you can at least improve by 1% a day, and what I mean by that is feed your mind 1%, I would start with, just start with this, completely eliminate the news out of your life. I'm talking news media that's on broadcast TV. Get rid of it, get rid of it, you don't need it. Because it's, gonna, it's not gonna fulfill you. It's gonna keep you up to date with current affairs, but you don't need that. What you need is you need you. Yes, you need you. You are the most important person in this life. If you have kids, yes, they're, they're the most important thing in your life. In a sense of you'll die for them, right? You'll take a bullet for them. But what I can tell you something right now, if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of your kids. That's a fact. That's a fact. And you know this example, right? They teach us to you. When you go traveling on a plane, they say, and maybe it's like hardcore turbulence, they'll say to you, I love Hollywood. There's also black cars. There's just black cars everywhere. I have a silver car, but there's black cars everywhere. They say to you, when the oxygen mask drops from the ceiling, right, to, to give you some oxygen because there's a lot of turbulence, they say, take care of yourself first, then take care of the people next to you or your kids. Because think about it. It's, it, it makes sense, right? If you don't take care of yourself and you're trying to help your children out, and all of a sudden you pass out because you're helping the person next to you or, the children, or your children, now you can't save yourself. Now your children are missing a parent. Um, I mean, I know it's common sense. I'm not trying to insult you. I'm trying to be really sincere here in letting you know sometimes just put yourself first. Everything else will take care of itself because you're there for it. So going into Hollywood, there's a Hollywood freeway, the 101 next to us. Right in front of us on the right-hand side is the Hollywood Bowl. I was here for 16 years. And here's one thing that, that really made me carry all my dreams in Hollywood and believing I could do it, right? Was I believe well, a lot of little welcome to the bad, the welcome to the earthquake zone of, of, of California, right? San Francisco and Los Angeles. I rode on notoriously cracked and full of potholes because of, uh, because of volcanoes, because of earthquakes. So when I came here, I was 20 years old. I mean, Hollywood is daunting, it is overwhelming, it is it's a concrete jungle, and it's so competitive. Everybody out here is looking for fame and glory. Every single human being, from every waitress to every receptionist to every driver, 
I mean, uh, you, you're next to neighbor. I mean, it's so competitive. Everyone wants to be an actor. And here I'm acting, right? I'm on my own YouTube channel. That's the Hollywood Bowl. Kurt Cobain just lived up there. Um, he wanted to be right next to the Hollywood Bowl so him and, and Courtney could listen to the, the music playing the Hollywood Bowl. Um, uh, I listened to this uh, Tony Robbins. The, uh, I was the, the Awakening. I forget the book. But I remember listening to the CDs in my car. And I remember driving down to San Diego. Um, there's a South African restaurant down there that I like. So I was going down there. And there was a store down there that I like. And where the four or five and the five meet uh, was when I had the bakery. Bam! Like the crack in my universe. And Tony Robbins, the epiphany came to me. I can do anything and have anything I want. Before that, I kind of believed it, but I didn't know it. I didn't feel it. All of a sudden, now that I'm with, uh, now that I'm with, um, now that I'm with, uh, listen to these CDs, I can feel it, right? I'm like, whoa, that's incredible. Fast forward, I go to Hollywood. A, within a year and a half, so my dream was to work for Steven Spielberg. With a year and a half, I was working for Steven Spielberg. That's how, uh, how my mind was so set on working for him. Okay, I was in the mail room, but I was working for DreamWorks and I worked, I, I, I saw, Steve, I didn't see Steven every day. I probably saw him once a week. I saw, I saw a lot of celebrities, you name it, Tom Cruise, um, uh, Guy Ritchie, Jeff Goldblum, um, uh, The Rock, Matt, Matt Damon, um, Oh man, so many. Uh, uh, Jack Black, all these, just, all these kind of cool, cool guys, right? Because uh, I manifested it. I believed it. I read books about it. I could see myself. And I lived in Hollywood. So I was attracting all these elements. And then I achieved it. Once I achieved it, I was super, super stoked. All I had to now do was kind of make my mark, okay? Claim my name, uh, the Walk of Fame. <laughs> Walk of Fame. I probably won't go that far, but when it comes to success, I've achieved way more than I've ever dreamt of. I always used to dream when I was on the school going to, to when I was on the school bus going to school in the morning that I was being limousine to school. And everywhere I was driving that there, there, there were my builders and my sisters and there's people all, I was there like they were their president. I governed over them. I used to have these weird kind of daydreams going on the way to school because I was so bloody bored. Well, here I am in Hollywood working for the Steven Spielberg. Years later, I, I, I work on big movies with Dennis Quaid and Tyrese Gibson and Javon Rubisi and all of them. And then I go and I leave, then I go into making movies. I directed a couple of feature films, directed a couple of short films, wrote a bunch of scripts, got some awards. So it was awesome, it was awesome. It still wasn't fulfilling though because I was being creative, uh, but I, I wasn't really seeing anything. I, I was holding the movie in my hands, but I, I wanted something more, guys. And then the crash came of 2009 and my whole universe fell apart. And where I'm going with this is I needed... I needed life. I needed something to help get me ahead, to um, let me see what I could create, be more tangible, like like buildings and roofs, right? So my, I went to my uncle, my uncle David, and I said to him, I said, David, I said, you, you, he knows I'm a good salesman because I'm a very good salesman. What can I do that I can that I can do well when I go back to LA, right? Because I just have to get the time. He says, Kevin, go into real estate, sell homes. I'm like, well, what do you mean? He said, sell home. So I said, oh, like, oh, like candy and, and Lorene and them. And he said, well, no, don't do commercial. Go ahead and sell re real estate, residential homes, people's homes, because commercial is a much longer process. So I got my real estate license in three and a half months and I started doing real estate. And that's what I want to teach you as well is in my, in my, in my efforts to show you what I can accomplish in life, I really want to go ahead and share with you how I've achieved my goals through just taking action. That was the one thing, guys. If I'd waited for the perfect timing, I never would've got my real estate license. I knew nothing about real estate, nothing at all. And what I did was I went ahead and I signed up for the online classes, did the online classes, went in for the state exam, knew I was gonna fail because I'm not very academic. I'm, I'm ADHD, I'm ADHDDDD. That's how bad it is. Guess what? I crashed it, I nailed it, I got it. This is Hollywood, this is all Hollywood. I'll do some reverse shots for you. Um, I know, I've got my real estate license. I knew I failed, but God was with me, and man, when I walked out there, it said I passed. That was awesome. Now I'm a licensed professional in the state of California. My first real estate deal was for a sale for $3.1 million, $3 million, 
We closed in 17 days at $2.7 million. The commission paycheck was $69,500. That was more money than I ever earned in a year in a job that I had. And it was more money than I'd ever seen in my life. Now, I don't know what that equation ran, but time is about 15. You know, so I mean, so so hold on. So let's, let's, let's just run off to $70,000. I mean, that's like, whew, that's almost a million rand. Wow, wow, guys. I mean, that's just awesome. So to kind of give you an idea, so never give up, always believe in yourself, always take action, take action, take action, take action. I came to America with $20 in my hand and one suitcase and look where I am today. I mean, I'm in the land of celebrities. I, I'm living in the land, now, now I'm developing real estate, I'm building homes, building hotels. And the most important thing, I'm leaving behind a, a legacy because I'm now building um, assisted living facilities. How awesome is that? Guys, Never give up, always pursue your dreams, always take action, believe in yourself, make it happen, keep moving forward, never give up. And if you do one thing a day towards your goal, by the end of the year, that's 365 things that you've done to achieve your goal. Just do one thing a day. To me, the fast way to become rich was to give me a real estate license. If you want, I can show you how to do that. Just go online and sign up for a real estate course. Do that for the next two and a half months. I can help you, I, I can tell you which schools to go to. Within three months, I had my license. Within six months, I closed my first big deal. I mean, that's a shocker, but I made it happen. Hey, I believe in you, okay? I love you. I'm all about doing the right thing. I intend to do the right thing, I'm not perfect. And uh, I wanna share more with you. I hope that kind of makes today enlightens you or gives you more insight into failure and success. And guys, I failed many, many times. Cheers.